Hello. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Verbling. I am Teacher Oakley. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, as the case may be, wherever you are. In uh, this class, uh, we're going to do a little grammar work today. Recently, I've had uh, some students asking me about um, gerunds and infinitives, so I decided to do a class. It can be very confusing, first of all. Uh, if anybody preparing to join the class, please do download the documents. That will help. Uh, first, let me say, talking about gerunds and infinitives, uh, sure, I'm going to give you a kind of a power lesson today, and maybe we'll do some practice. I'll have you guys interactively practice to get the idea. But really, gerunds and infinitives is more than one quick lesson. Oh, oh. Hopefully, I can give you some good pointers. Whoa, hello. Hi, Hi Dennis. Dennis. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Dennis, it's quite loud where, where you are. <laughs> There's a lot of extra noise. Okay. So, uh, it would be great if you have a headphone and microphone. Uh, if you do not, then please mute your microphone if you're not speaking. Okay. Well, you can come back, Dennis. It's okay. Uh, that's fine. Just uh, because it's very noisy and you obviously have a microphone that can hear the whole room, it's very loud in the class. So for anyone, you know, uh, if, if you don't, best of all is to have a, a headset or earplugs and a microphone. If you do not, however, uh, please mute your mic when you're not speaking. Uh, hi, guys. Hi, uh, hi, Igor. How are you today? Hi, Teacher Rock. I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm okay. It's, uh, it's monsoon season so it's like permanent rain now <laughs> what kind of season Mon monsoon oh okay well, let me check my chat box if it's so do you have a headache do I have a headache because of rain no no why would why would I have a headache I, I heard that people may have headache when it's rainy no Outside. no no I don't have a headache but it's very very humid so I feel like a fish, like I have to keep moving to keep my gills flapping in order to breathe. So it's very humid. There's a lot of moisture in the air. Uh, hi, hi, Juan. How are you today? Very good, and you? Okay. Damp. And the... I'm damp. <laughs> You're damp. <laughs> yes. You don't, like, you don't like rain. I'm damp, proud to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't like the humidity, you know. Yeah. I, the, the, do you guys get uh, humidity with a uh, lot of, uh, of uh, heat or that yeah. feeling that you feel like you, you, you didn't bathe for a week? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we we have here in in our country, there's a region where mm -hmm. humidity, is, humidity is like that. And mm -hmm. I don't know how people do it. Yeah, to be honest, it's so exactly I feel it. you. your your explanation is exactly correct. You you take a bath or a shower, and then two hours later, you feel like you haven't had a bath or a shower for a week. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. correct. Yeah. Uh, very. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. Uh, hi, Andrew. How are you? Hello. Okay. I'm fine. And you? I'm good. Nice to see you. Nice to see uh, as well. The, I'm a little surprised. The class, my class is a little bit early today, but here you guys all are already. You guys all waking up early? <laughs> Should I say good morning to everyone? Good evening to uh, Juan, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> good day. Uh, it's almost midnight here. 
Ah, uh, okay. All right. But it uh, is worth it. <laughs> really? Well, let's hope so. Let's see. Uh, okay, uh, to introduce the topic a little bit, um, gerunds and infinitives, frankly, it's really too big a topic to talk about in one class, but hopefully I can give you guys some general pointers uh, to deal with when to use a gerund, or ing, like swimming, and when to use an infinitive, which is uh, to and the verb, present tense verb, of the infinitive form, to swim. Of course, many times it makes no difference whatsoever. I like swimming. I like to swim. What's the difference? Beats me. As far as intelligent speaking in English, it doesn't make any difference at all. That you, You're making your point and there's really, there's no grammatical problem with either of those simple phrases and it makes no difference at all. The, the problem with gerunds and infinitives is that uh, there are certain verbs which we always follow with an infinitive or certain nouns we always follow with an infinitive and the same thing uh, sometimes even with nouns or even phrases we follow with either a gerund or an infinitive. There is no possible way, given the one hour of this classroom time, to actually go through the lists of those words. You kind of have to, a lot of learning about this, you just have to experience and practice using the language to see which makes sense. The other problem with gerunds and infinitives Sometimes, and, and we'll look at examples here in a minute, I'm just introducing. Sometimes if we use a gerund, or we say the same phrase with an infinitive, it actually changes the meaning. Okay? Uh, if I say, I remembered to get married. <laughs> Whoa, I forgot. I knew I forgot something. I remembered to get married, and I remember getting married. Oh, I remember my wedding day. Those are two different meanings. Obviously, it changes the meaning of the sentence if I use a gerund or an infinitive. So that's another another issue that you have to deal with. Okay, I'm any questions at all at any point? I know you guys aren't shy. I don't have to tell you this, but just uh, jump in and and ask away if you have a question. I'm going to go through the worksheet that I had attached to the class description, but briefly. There's a lot of information there. Uh, anybody and viewers, please do uh, go ahead and download the information. I'm not going to cover every tiny little detail of it because there's too much information, but just so you have it, you can study on your own time, what have you. Uh, go right ahead and and actually today I actually have the link to the main handout. Way, yay. Um, okay, so let me let me just uh, I'm gonna go down the handout. You can follow along as you would. Uh, obviously, as I as I mentioned, gerunds are when we add ing. You can use a gerund as the subject of a sentence. Reading helps you learn English. All right, the first word before the verb. Fine. Uh, Complement of the sentence, her favorite hobby is reading. Or the object of the sentence, I, subject, enjoy, verb, reading, the object. Uh, obviously, gerunds can be negative. I don't enjoy <laughs> reading. <laughs> okay. I enjoy not working. Okay. Uh, I enjoy not reading. Fine. Obviously, they can be negative. Uh, infinitives are the two form of the verb. All right. And just like gerunds, they can be the subject, the object, complement. To learn is important. 
Okay, notice though, to learn is important. Or if I say learning is important, what, what do you think is the difference there? Do you hear a difference there, Igor, between those two? To what? Learn. Okay, it's important and learning is important? Yeah, is there a difference, really? To learn is important or learning is important? Learning is, uh, you focused on activity of learning. Well, I really, the same. You, well, you're both right. Uh, <laughs> the, the only difference is, in, really, the meaning is the same, just like uh, I love swimming, I love to swim. Okay, the meaning is really essentially the same. The only thing is, you would, to learn is important is kind of more formal or more general and you would you would see this infinitive as the subject more often in uh, like uh, academic writing or something like that you know uh, for example you're writing for your uh, IELTS test or TOEFL test you might actually choose to use uh, infinitive as a subject rather than gerund it's just a little bit more formal and and formal but general. Okay, that that's where you would see that kind of construction. For example, uh, okay, but you can also use infinitive as a complement to the sentence. The most important thing is to learn. Our object, he wants to learn. Now, okay, he wants to learn. I obviously I cannot say he wants learning. <laughs> That doesn't make sense uh, because wants is one of those words that we always follow with an infinitive. Is there? Can you think of using the verb wants? He wants. He wants eating. No, it doesn't make sense. He feel wants like. biking. He likes. No, okay. Feel, feel like I feel like swimming. I feel like swimming. I, I want, yeah, it, it means yeah. I want to swim, right? Right. Okay, very good, Andrew. I, I feel like swim, swimming means you want to swim. So, right. very good. That's a very good point. You can change the verb often. If I use want, I have to use, I have to use an infinitive. I want to swim. But I can change it. Excellent example. I feel like swimming. But... Now look, look at feel like. I feel like to swim. <clears throat> right? I, I can't do yes. that. So, okay, there you go. Perfect example of a verb or verb construction. One only takes infinitive. One only takes the gerund. That's a perfect example right there. Um, Okay, uh, again, in, infinitives emphasize possibility, potential, general, and it's a little bit more formal. Uh, most of the time, you will use a gerund as the subject of a sentence or at the end. Now, uh, this, you know, reading is important. Most of the time, especially in speaking, you're going to use a gerund more often as a subject because we tend to speak less formally than we write, right? Um, so, as, as a subject, you probably are going to use a gerund when speaking. Yeah, I said that. Uh, okay. Gets more difficult, again, when you're trying to choose a gerund or infinitive as the object something the action the verb happens to. Uh, all right. So, uh, again, more a few more examples. We talked about wants and feels like. Uh, other examples may be suggested. Can you make a sentence with suggested? Yeah, suggest to suggest is a tricky word. After using this <laughs> word, we have to use by infinitive, yeah? 
Yeah, so you're right. Suggest is a tricky word. <laughs> Good observation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're correct. Uh, to offer and to suggest. Right, or offer. He offered... Okay. He offered... He offered, he, he offered her to go out, for example. Right. But he suggested her go out. Uh, he suggested... He suggested going out, yeah. Right. Okay. So, again, I, I'm not going to, like, beat this up because it's kind of pointless because there's different, different verbs. One needs a gerund, one needs a infinitive. Uh, how about... I'll, I'll just throw out some examples. Uh, how about keeps? What do you think? What do you think Juan keeps? He keeps, meaning repeated action. Juan. Okay. Um, another example. Yeah, if you're going to... Okay, using the verb keeps, would you use an infinitive or a gerund? What do you think? Meaning repeated action. He keeps... It will be... Infinity. Okay. Gerund. No, gerund, yeah. <laughs> gerund. All right, for he example... Keeps if he keeps talking. Talking. Ooh, you re ooh, ooh. Igor keeps reading my mind. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Talking. Very good. He keeps talking. We can't say he keeps to talk. He keeps to read my mind. Doesn't work. He keeps talking. Okay. So, again, you're going to have to learn. Usually, as we've mentioned, wants or feels like or suggests or offers, usually there's an alternative. One takes a gerund, one takes the infinitive. That's very common. So you just have, uh, you know, okay, he keeps talking. How about he continues? could be either. He continues to talk. He continues talking. So usually there's an alternate, okay, to the whatever verb that you're working off with a gerund or infinitive. Um, okay, uh, another quick note, very simply, uh, gerunds can be modified with possessives. His, her, uh, their singing was terrible. Her acting was atrocious. Um, okay, it's very common to use a, a possessive pronoun with gerunds. All right, just a quick note there. Uh, okay, there. Are, okay, gerunds. All right, talking about gerunds with actions. All right, let's. Let's uh, talk about this for a minute. Another important point. Okay. Oh, who else is here? Dennis. Hi, Dennis. You snuck in. I wasn't paying attention. Hi, Dennis. Uh, hello, welcome. Hello, How are you? I'm, okay. I'm doing well. Thank you. Do you... Okay, if you have an activity golfing, how do you, how do you express... Uh, okay, you want to do that activity, how do you express that, like golfing? I want to, uh, I I want enjoy, to golf. I go. enjoy playing, playing golf. Ah, okay, well, all right. I want to go golfing, or I like playing golf. Oh, I like, I like to play golf. Notice when it's golf, not the ger not when it's the noun. I like to play golf. We use play. All right. Uh, we normally with ing we use go, go swimming, go golfing, go water skiing. Usually individual activities or sports. Usually when we're talking about team sports, uh, we use play. Or, uh, 
go with the gerund, play, for example, play basketball. Play, you don't say play skiing. I want to play skiing. That's wrong. Uh, you go skiing, you play basketball. Golf is a weird one because you can do it either way. You play golf, you go golfing. Um, you play tennis. Okay, you don't go tennising. Ing, ing. That makes no sense. Some activities, however, I should mention, we do. Can you think of any with do? Any of you guys? Can you think of any activities where we use do? I do. For example, to do the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> it's some kind of activity as well. I, I was trying to think of fun activities, Andrew. <laughs> okay. I... Okay, but they, okay, you can do that different ways. I hate to do the laundry. I hate doing the laundry. Mm, yeah, okay, but laundry is a is a is a is a noun, right? That's true. A noun. We're going to use do with a noun, so that you're halfway there. But activities-wise, things like I do taekwondo, I do karate. Or activities that are more like crafts. I do needlepoint. I do crossword puzzles, for example. I can't. I won't. I probably wouldn't say I play crossword pl puzzles. <laughs> puzzles. Sorry. Okay, that's an, another uh, point with gerunds. All right. Now the. Biggest point that I actually want to make here about gerunds and infinitives. I'm kind of skipping ahead here if you're following along on the handout sheet. Uh, one of the most the the biggest differences, uh, easiest ways to tell when to use a gerund or infinitive. Okay, if you're speaking and you're talking about purpose, uh, for example, in my tiny little pencil, uh, what do I use the pencil for? I use the pencil to for write... For making notes. Ah, for making notes. Very good. For making. If Obviously, to is a preposition, but it's really not considered a preposition when we use it in the infinitive. I use a pencil to to make notes, for example. All right, fine. I can with if I use to, well, obviously I have to use the infinitive. If I use any other preposition, uh, I'm going to use the gerund. We never use, uh, for example, for and then the infinitive for to write with, never. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense. And this is true whether the whether the preposition is following a, a verb or a noun or an adjective phrase, whatever. This is a, one of the general rules I wanted to uh, teach you guys today. If you're trying to decide gerund or infinitive, if you're following any other preposition, it's, it's going to be a gerund. All right. Usually four, because you're showing purpose. That's the most common, definitely. Uh, okay, let me... Ah, uh, okay, again, we, we use infinitives uh, after, sometimes after a noun, sometimes after adjective or adverb. Uh, for example, things like the box is too heavy to carry. Okay, normally we're going to say the box is too heavy to carry, not the box is too heavy for carrying. Okay, the television is too expensive to buy. Okay, we're not going to say the television is too expensive for buying. We generally use an infinitive. when we, Especially when we use to... T-O-O, -O, that is, um, and then an adjective, or an adverb. He ran too slowly to win the race. Same thing. 
so that's another place where we use infinitive usually. Another one may be an adjective and enough. She is tall enough to reach the book. Tall enough to reach. Uh, okay, so we're basically we're what we're doing is we're making a we're talking about a condition. The box is too heavy to carry. She is tall enough to reach. He was smart enough to pass the test. Uh, okay, so when you're we're talking about a condition, which is an adjective or adverb. We're going to follow it with an infinitive. He has enough money to buy the car. Okay, that's a condition. In order to buy the car, he has to have enough money. All right? So usually with things where we're expressing a condition, we, we, will, use, uh, we will use the infinitive. Um... Okay. Uh, another strange thing, okay, well not strange, but usually we use a gerund when we're talking about a location. She stood at the corner waiting. All right. Uh, I, I lied in bed thinking all day. I lay in bed thinking all day. Sorry. I, I would never say I lay in bed to think. Well, maybe I guess I could say I lay in bed to think all day because I'm showing purpose. And I could say that actually. He stood at the corner to wait. But it, notice it changes the meaning completely. He stood at the corner to wait. He stood at the corner waiting. You know, he stood at the corner to wait means that was his purpose for standing at the corner. I lay in bed to think. That was my purpose. I lay in bed thinking. I'm just saying that's the action I was doing. I'm actually emphasizing laying in bed. Uh, okay, we're going to try some practice in a second. Last note, really. Uh, when using infinitive or gerunds, of course, we, you can use these with any verb tense. Uh, similar to like using passive forms, you can you can be talking in any verb tense, past, uh, past continuous, whatever. It makes no difference. You can still run into situations where you, you use gerunds and infinitives. Uh, okay, I'm sick of talking and my throat is dry. So I'm going to do a little quiz with you guys. I'm going to have you guys <clears throat> try this. Uh, give me half a second here. I'll do a screen share, and I'll let you guys try to do some fill in the blanks. You're also going to have to do a little, maybe a little bit of thinking about vocabulary because uh, the blank doesn't give you the verb. I'm I'm making it a little more challenging for you here. Uh, hang on. So you know, be creative here. Come up with whatever you want. Okay, Andrew, why don't you start us off here? Okay. <clears throat> Dan enjoys reading science fiction. Well, that was simple, wasn't it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very easy. All right. Dennis, what do you think of the next one here? Dennis? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Cheryl suggested uh, watching a movie after work. Ah, okay. Cheryl suggested watching a movie after work. Very good. Uh, is there any other way to phrase that? Do you think? The, to have the same meaning, I mean. Uh, I think suggest is followed by gerund, always. No? Yes, it is. Could we say Cheryl suggested we watch a movie after work? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. But using a, but I, I can't say Cheryl suggested watch a movie after work. But I can use a pronoun and a verb. 
right? Cheryl suggested we watch a movie after work. Right. But you are correct. Suggested always gets uh, infinitive watching. Okay. Uh, uh, can I say, can I say yeah. suggested, suggested us to watch a movie or it's... Ah, very good question. Um, no. It, uh, okay, we can say, we can use the phrase suggested to us. Uh, okay, you would have to say to us. Normally we would say we. Well, I can't even say normally. Using us as a pronoun here is okay, but we'd have to say to us. Cheryl suggested to us that it would be a good idea. Okay, something like that. Yes, that is grammatically correct. But we're normally, we have to actually ex use to us. Okay? Yep. Do you, you follow? Okay. Uh, Igor, next. Please, what do you think? I miss in the travel industry. Maybe I can get my old job back. What to miss? I don't understand. Miss? Uh, okay, I I miss my m mother. I have not seen her for seven years. No, I know what is uh, miss, but uh, okay. what word we can put? I miss what? Well, the clue is in the second sentence. Maybe I can get my old job back. So he's missing his Working. old job. Ah, ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. Very good. So, Jaren form. I miss working in the travel industry. Uh, yes. Okay, if we miss any action of verb, can we can we ever use an infinitive with miss? If you think about it, I miss to swim. I miss to ski. No. Right. But we all we always have to use a Jaren. I miss walking on the beach whatever it is. Okay, so miss is another one of those words where we have to follow it with the gerund. All right, uh, Juan, try the next one. Okay. <clears throat> where did you learn speaking Spanish? Was it in? Uh, was it in? <laughs> learn, 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 <laughs> Sorry. Learn to speak. Yes. Was it in Spain or Latin America? Sorry, I lost the end <laughs> of the sentence. Sorry. <laughs> was it in? Ooh, incomplete sentence. Yeah. Now wait a second. Where did you learn speaking Spanish? I don't think that's right. I think. I think. Learn to, yeah. yeah. To I think it's an infinitive. I think at learn is one of the verbs where we have to use infinitive. One. Um, where did you learn to milk a cow? <laughs> where on a farm? <laughs> on a farm. Very good. Can you milk a cow, Juan? Uh, well, it was uh, a long time ago, but uh, I think I can. Far out. Okay. Me too. I can milk a cow. I have that skill. <laughs> One of my many jobs. <laughs> Working on the farm. Shoveling poop, milking the cows. All right, so there we go. Now we have another word, learn, that we know has to go with an infinitive. And, they, you know, you basically have to learn. They're, you know, they're common verbs, so you just kind of have to learn as you go along. It's ridiculous to attempt to memorize the different verbs followed by gerund, followed by infinitive. You just have to get familiar with them. I think, in, in my opinion. That's my opinion, of course. But. All right. Andrew, try the next one here. I would say, do you mind me to translate this letter? Or can I say, do you mind me on translation this letter? Yeah, even I'm confused now. I wonder if I <laughs> misprinted this when I wrote it. Do you mind me uh, to translate this letter? Remembering to, to translate this letter. Yeah, that's still weird. 
you mind me remembering yeah. to translate but, this letter? But but it makes sense when when I say, do you mind me to, to translate this letter? No no verb needed here. But it's possible to say, uh, ah, okay. mind me remembering. Do you mind me working on translation this letter? Me working on or okay, wait a second. I think I misprinted when or I miswrote this or something <clears throat> when I wrote this when I made this up. I think I I had a misprint. Do you mind me? Wait a minute. Now if I put to translate this letter, hmm. Okay. What do you think? Do you mind me? How about do you mind me preparing to translate this letter? Something like that. Do you mind me? Can I say, do you mind me to help you to translate this letter? Uh, well, do you mind me? Can I can I actually have an infinitive, regardless of my bad, you know, writing this? But the point is, do you mind me? Can I can I actually use an infinite an infinitive? Actually, do you mind me to? Can. No? Do you mind me to borrow the car? No. Uh, for example, do you mind me leave alone to translate this letter? <laughs> <laughs> do you mind leaving me alone? Yeah. Yeah. You're still gonna use a gerund. Do you mind leaving me alone? <laughs> Which would be a common <laughs> phrase. Okay. Very good. Good example. Uh, do you mind me borrowing your car? I think "Do you mind me?" is a very common phrase. It's a, a well, a polite phrase unless you're being sarcastic, like "Do you mind leaving me alone?" But I think "Do you mind me?" is a phrase where you, a phrase, an entire phrase, where you have to follow it with a gerund. I think that's what I was trying to do here when I wrote this. Okay, "Do you mind me?" Leaving right now? Do you mind me staying? Offering. Okay. Do you mind me offering? Okay. Offering to translate this letter in this case? Yeah, either way, any way we slice it, anything we come up with, it's a gerund, right? Okay, uh, Dennis, try uh, number six here. Uh, he asked me to talk to the store manager. Okay, it could be. All right, you're throwing in a, a pronoun there, but that's so. That's all right. He asked me to speak. All right, or just he asked to speak to the store manager. Obviously, we're using an infinitive. Can we use a gerund with asked? Asked. He asked. Mm. No. No, I would agree. He asked speaking. He asked talking. No, there's, there's just no possible way. So here we go. Here's another verb that has to be followed by, in this case, an infinitive. He asked to run to the store. He asked to go to the bathroom. All right. There you go. All right, Igor, number seven. Uh, you've never mentioned in Japan before. How long did you live there? You never mentioned living. Mm-hmm. You never mentioned living in Japan before. Okay, very good. Right. You never mentioned to live in Japan before would not make sense. So, uh, and, uh there, okay. yeah. Uh, man mentioned your living in Japan before. Oh, very another uh, very good. You never mentioned your living in Japan before. Yes, that is another common construction. It's uh yeah, it's actually quite common. I think I mentioned it earlier in the lesson to have a possessive pronoun in front of the gerund. That's actually quite common and, and acceptable. Obviously, grammatically correct. Uh, yeah, you're right, and that would be very normal to hear it that way, Dennis. Uh, however, to hear it with an infinitive, I think, is impossible. Uh, he mentioned to talk to the boss. He mentioned talking to the boss. All right, again, one by one we, we learn these verbs. Mentioned always gets a gerund. All right. 
Uh, one. Try eight. <clears throat> if he keeps blank to work late, he's going. He's going to get fired. If hmm. he keeps. If he keeps, no, because I cannot say making excuses. <laughs> I don't know yeah. because you could, to work well, late. If no, if no, no, no. Uh, well, almost. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> if he keeps, if he if he keeps being, no, being, oh, I yeah. can't say so. If he keeps yeah? being to work late, no. No, we can't say so. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if he keeps making, <laughs> Jared, making excuses about coming to work late, or coming very to it, yeah. right, much more simply, if he keeps coming to work late. Yeah, I, I, I thought uh, yeah. it meant uh, an excuse to uh -huh. to work late. Which you could put that information in there. You just have to change the sentence a little bit. If he keeps making excuses about coming to work late, right? Uh, actually, that's interesting. If we look at it that way, you know, using your information, keeps, actually, we talked about it earlier. You need a gerund. If he keeps mm -hmm. swimming so slowly, he'll never win a meadow. Okay, fine. If he keeps coming to work late. Uh, notice when I use about. About is a preposition. If he keeps making excuses about coming to work late. Okay, th there we have another example of where we use a preposition and we need to have a gerund following it. We can never say uh, about to come to work late. That, that makes no sense. So mm -hmm. it brings up an, another example. Okay, Obviously, yeah, anytime. Uh, arriving? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I, I just uh, sorry for the interruption. I, I just no uh, problem. But yes, arriving would be a logical fill in the blank. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to say if he keeps being at work late? Being at work late. Yeah. He keeps. Let me think about that one. He keeps, he keeps being, being at work late. At work late. Well, It doesn't quite construe the meaning of his, uh, well, as Juan said, his arriving. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't quite work it, because okay. it doesn't translate. If he keeps being such an idiot, he's going to get <laughs> fired. Now, that works. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the I mean, It does work, uh, yeah. Right? Okay, because we use the verb be or being to show a state someone is in. He is in the state of idiocy. So uh -huh. he keeps being an Sorry. idiot. Uh, okay. So not quite, Andrew. But you, okay, you, thank you, you for could, the explanation. Sure, you could conceivably use being, though. One other quick note here. Obviously, we have another gerund here, but it's a gerund because he is going to get fired. Obviously, it's a gerund because we have the verb to be, and the gerund, it's because of tense, because this is a uh, simple continuous tense. This is a different kind of a different story than what we're talking about, trying to figure out gerund in infinitive. This is different. This is continuous tense. Okay. Thought I'd mention that. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, what What's uh, the difference between keep and continue? Okay. Good question. Damn you, Dennis. That's a very good question. If he continues coming to work late, if he keeps, really? You know what? No. If he continues to come to work late. You, you know what the only difference is? There is no difference, except I could say, I cannot say if he keeps to come to work, but I can say if he continues to come to work late. You know what? As far as meaning, there is no difference. 
I'm thinking, 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 and I can't really see a difference. Okay? So it's just an alternate verb, a synonym. So keep is just uh, more easy to say. Easier to, easier to say and more informal, more conversational. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, Andrew, I think. Debbie. Plans. Debbie. Okay. Debbie plans to go abroad next year. Okay. Very good. Obvious. Obviously, the infinitive. Debbie plans going abroad does not work, and mm -hmm. we could not use it. Yeah. So there we go. Yet another word. Um, plan. To study. They plan plans to study abroad next year. That, that would work as well. Uh, Debbie plans to go on a murder spree abroad next year. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, you guys didn't get my stupid joke. All right, Dennis? Okay. Here's another one. Agreed. All right. How about this one? Uh, I agreed to help Jack wash his car. All right. Infinitive. Cannot use I agreed helping Jack wash his car. So we keep bouncing back and forth. We find a verb that takes infinitive, one that finds a gerund. Again, you just have to get used to using those verbs. Notice these are all really common verbs. Agreed, plans, keeps, mentioned, yeah. right? So you just have to get used to using these common verbs in sentences and know if they take gerund or infinitive. Hmm, Igor, you got a hard one here. I can't stand her all the time. <laughs> yeah, very funny. It, it makes sense. <laughs> it, it does. It does make sense. Uh, even I, with, I, even without the blank. Stand, I can yeah. stand her using Gerund all the time. All the time. <laughs> okay, her using <laughs> using Gerunds all the time. How very Stevie. ironic. Gerund first. Her Speaking. compulsive shopping. Her shopping all the time. Her screaming all the time. Her nagging all the time. <laughs> yeah, there are many possible answers here. But you will notice that all of them are gerunds. All right. You know, one of the clues here is we got the uh, possessive pronoun. So if... If you're gonna, if you feel you need to use a possessive pronoun, her, their, our, whatever, you're probably going to need a gerund. That's another clue. Uh, let's get rid of, let's get rid of that, um, and let's get rid of that. Now, wait a minute. Does this change anything? I can't stand. Uh, hmm. Well, no. I'm, you know, think about a verb. An infinitive or gerund. I can't stand talking all the time. Okay, I can't stand to talk all the time. Ah, wait a second. Uh, Oakley, is this uh, any difference between I can't stand uh, him doing something or I can stand his doing something? Well, we would use. I can't stand, well, you could say, uh, of course, I can't stand his breath. <laughs> it always stinks. Okay. I can't stand his breath. Okay, that's the possessive. I can't stand him. Mm, I can't stand him talking all the time. Like that? Uh, that's what you mean. I can't stand his talking all the time. I can't stand him talking all the time. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, I see your question now. Uh, slight difference in meaning. I can't stand his talking. You're emphasizing talking. I can't stand him talking all the time. You're, you're emphasizing him. I think either is grammatically correct. You're just making a slightly different emphasis. I can't stand him talking all the time. I can't stand his talking all the time. You would even highlight that word in normal speech. You would use a uh, different intonation, actually, saying both of those sentences. 
to express which word you were highlighting or was more important. That would be normal. So you, you could say either, and the meaning is very, very close, really. You're expressing the same information. You're just making a slightly different emphasis. Uh, okay, I can't stand. Now, if I get rid of the pronoun, I can't stand working all the time. I can't stand to work all the time. Either one works, right? So the whole reason that we needed a gerund in the first place is because we had the possessive pronoun. And then in that case, I can't use an infinitive. All right, so that's an important thing to note. Uh, <laughs> our teacher, <laughs> here you go, Juan. Our teacher won't allow us. Wait. Here we go. Whoops. Do you, do you use? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Our teacher won't allow us to use dictionaries during the test. We cannot say using. Uh, the main verb, of course, here is allow. Negative, but it's allow. Uh, okay, well, isn't us? Uh, if we change this, our won't allow our using dictionaries. Ah, if it's a possessive. So this, here's another very good point we can learn. If it's a, just a normal pronoun, we can use infinitive. Right? If it's a possessive pronoun, we need to use gerund. All right. Allow using... What if we get rid of it? Us, our... Our teacher won't allow using dictionaries. Okay. Our teacher won't allow to use dictionaries. Hmm. Doesn't work. So if we get rid of any pronouns, we need a gerund. Allow... We don't allow biking on the weekends. We don't allow chewing with your mouth open, <laughs> for example. All right, Juan, let's look at another one here. <clears throat> Juan, you there? Yeah, uh, okay. I was reading the okay. silence. <laughs> okay, no problem. To call to take With a taxi. Bison. To take, yeah, okay, here we go again. To call, okay, that's fine. We, uh, yeah, okay, to call a taxi, to take a taxi, either one of those answers is logical, but it's infinitive. And again, same thing, we advise his taking of a taxi. We advise him to take a taxi. Sometimes it's just a lot, it's more common to say we advise him to take a taxi instead of, we advise his taking a taxi. It sounds strange, it's just not normal. I think grammatically speaking it's correct, it's just weird. Uh, Andrew, what do you think? Let's see if we can... Sorry? Uh, your turn, what do you think of this one? About the third one? Yeah? Sorry? Uh, you mean the third sentence? Third sentence, right? We advise him. I know fourth sentence. I I moved. I oh, don't know if you, I don't know if the thing moved with me. Hang on. Shoot. Mm -hmm. The city, the city doesn't allow. Uh, I don't. Uh, ah, the city doesn't allow a long curves painted red. What does curbs mean? Curbs. It's that kind of bump on the side of a street where the street goes up maybe, I don't know, what, eight centimeters or something? Uh, eight, ten centimeters. So you park mm -hmm. and maybe... Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. The city yeah. doesn't allow stopping along curbs painted red. Okay. Stopping. Stop. Okay. That's the main point. You got a gerund or it could possibly be parking. Parking, yeah. It's yeah. better to say parking. Probably. Parking. Puking. <laughs> throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> the city doesn't allow throwing up along curbs painted red. Everywhere else, perfectly okay. 
Okay. I'm getting tired. Now I'm giving obnoxious answers. Okay. Very good. Dennis. Oh, it's what? I may, might have made a mistake on this one. It's strange, yeah. Yes, it is. I might have made him another mistake here. She prefers dinner my... She, she prefers eating my dinner because yeah. she doesn't like to cook. Ah, okay. Yes, I put the blank in the wrong place. <laughs> You're absolutely right. She prefers eating my dinner. Ah, okay, this one's all screwed up. Right. Very good. So you even corrected my mistakes. That was very good, Dennis. Okay. Terrific. Ah, okay. And my, again, with the possessive. All right. So hopefully you're seeing some ex some trends here. It keeps being the same. We keep saying the same same forms over and over. All right, Juan. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't... I hope you don't mind. Mm, tricky. I hope you don't mind my smoke while well, you uh, eat. Okay, but can I say my, my smoke? smoke? Smoking, yeah. Is my that? okay, smoking. Right. I hope you don't mind my smoking while you eat. Okay. Or any other disgusting habit which you'd like to fill in the blanks with would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't mind my farting while you eat. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. Okay. Sorry, that was disgusting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, you're, All right. Apology upset. Okay. Ah, thank you. You're too kind. Okay, Andrew, what do you think? John has never on time to work. I I hate his coming late every day. Coming late? Ah, or okay. In this case, being late. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. That answers your question even better than I did. I hate his being late because we express the idea of on time or the time factor here with late so then you could use being right the yeah. state is late the his state of being is late ah there you go that actually answers your question yeah. better than I did yeah right. as, as you mentioned in previous sentences right being such an idiot yeah uh, right <laughs> it was really funny <laughs> okay Dennis what do you think uh, Sarah urged me to take part in the next election. Okay, you, you used a phrasal verb, but that's a very good point. Phrasal verbs are going to work the same way. Take part in. Take, take part in is a three-word a three word phrasal. That's fine. Um, possibly vote. Sarah urged me to vote in the next election. Uh, urged. Can you use a gerund with urged, do you think? Uh, with uh, my. So I'm sorry. Urge, uh, Sarah urged my. Uh, okay. I don't know. It's possible to say my taking place sounds my, strange. No, I urge my taking part in. Uh, like what you said. Uh, that's possible. Okay. Urges me to. Urges me to. To vote. Yeah, okay, infinitive, but I don't think there's any way to use a gerund with I, urged, is my point. Urged swimming. I, I urge exercising. I urge you to exercise. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, thanks guys for coming to class today. Thanks a lot. I hope you uh, at least learned a little bit about uh, gerunds and infinitives. However, I am out of time. I will be taking a break for an hour, and I will be be back mm, one hour from now. So enjoy. Uh, maybe I'll see you guys later. I'm going to go have my lunch. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot.